Steven, sorry, yes. uh, with, the, with the sunglasses, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> oh, so, sorry, sorry. Don't want to be impolite, but finally summer has come. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I don't see anything. <laughs> okay, nice. So, you're the bass player in the band for uh, like uh, five years, five two years. albums? Yeah. yeah, yeah, five years. That's nice. So, uh, it's not a, a problem that uh, Neil's not there. Uh, I don't know uh, much more about him than you. So uh, uh, the only member <laughs> I re <laughs> the only member I really know is like Sebastian, since he's the mastermind of the band and there from the beginning. So, uh, but um, maybe tell me uh, about the songwriting process. Obviously, there's a new album coming out, uh, and that's the name of the band, in fact, because Arden Hogan is like uh, the Hoarder of Fear. So, absolutely. So, it's like, uh, um, it's like an eponymous album without saying it directly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, the, the initial idea came together when, when it was clear that we wanted to do a more classic or an open album, you know? Okay. Like, imagining having the, the classic or an open sound just transferred in the, into the year 2024 with the, all the knowledge and the, 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 the finesse of the songwriting we have now, you know, combined with this classic or an open style, you know? And so, when, to please when he, old when fans. He, no, no, no. To please us, you know. Oh yeah, and, that's the good answer. I think. I think. At, at first, we have to be happy, and if the fans like that too, you know, so can get better, you know. Yeah. Um, but if we cannot cannot live the songs, if we cannot, you know, deliver the songs, you know doesn't make any sense so uh just put it into extremes you know having or nogan put out a dance record <laughs> or something like that or a death metal record then it just would be us you know i'll be intrigued but maybe so, not the first day buyer <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so back to the songwriting process um once we had the more or less the direction set. You know, we just, uh, let me tell the story. You know, we, we tried to write some Ornogan songs, but everything that came out was like, we collected all the ideas uh, in uh, just some online groups and stuff. And everything that uh, came out was like, okay, you know? And if, you, and if you have a record like Gunman, if you have a record like Final Days, you know, over-the-top records, both, and you have just stuff that is okay, you know that you're doing something wrong. And uh, so that it, it was no, no real blockage, but um, we just didn't... The, the, the spark was missing, you know? And then uh, save it the, the idea to just contact this this one guy who does Arden Hogan YouTube covers, you know, this guy, he's, he's from Paraguay, Santi, and um, he's uh, Uruguay, sorry, uh, and he's such a diehard Arden Hogan fan, you know, he, he knows the songs, I would say, even better than we do. <laughs> and oh so he just gave him a phone call and said, hey, it's safe from Arden Hogan, you know, what about like writing a song together, you know? And he was like kind of at first starstruck. He said, you, you want me to do what? And what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let's 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 write a song together. And then he just it just like out of a well, you know, he delivered like one song idea per day at least. <laughs> at, at the end, you know, it, it also it, it was six parts of everything that that he delivered that actually landed on the album only small bits and pieces but the thing is he started 
he he just started to to get the juices flow. You know, he showed us what Orton Ogden is actually about, and with yeah, you know, just just him uh, writing what he thought would be a typical Orton Ogden song. It was like click, and there were there were the songs. You know, just and and Sape also came in with like another kill song, another killer hook, like <laughs> every two days. Yeah. This is what when the, when that, the songwriting really started. That's that's so cool. So he was like the sixth member of the band for the songwriting process. Yeah, he, not really, but he, he was the, the 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 missing spark to get the fire going, you know? Yeah. And and the, the you know the best part is that even uh, some some of his riffs even made it to the record. Hey, that's cool. So cool. Yeah. For, for uh, from a fan's uh, perspective, you, you can dream better than that. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, you, you know, you know the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg. Oh, totally. That's a cool movie. Yeah. 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 I mean, he did not join the band, uh, but you know. He uh, joined us for this period of time. You know? Just to be involved is so uh, is so yeah. cool. Absolutely. But, the, but like you said, the guy know know your band like uh, on the tip of his uh, finger. So he, yeah. if you want to bring back the the DNA, the maybe the the essence of the band that. Uh, that made the band what it is at the at at the beginning uh it's mm. it's a really good uh outside of the box idea i think to pull that off and that guy surely uh maybe revitalize a little bit um because after so many albums it it can be very difficult to uh to compose great songs and not uh, being too repetitive, too per repetitive at the same time. Absolutely, you know, when we uh, now we're now putting together a new set for next year's headlining tour and also for the release shows, and we're just discussing now which songs we could play, which we haven't done for such a long time, you know. And then looking back, it's like I, hey, I man, love that we're playing, we're playing the same songs for. Uh, years now <laughs> and we yes we always and forget that there's so many great so what i was saying is uh i think it's um uh, it's maybe a a problem for a lot of band they are playing the same song over and over again so if you have the chance to see the band just once, it's cool. You see all the songs maybe you wanted to to see, but if you're a real fan and you're go you're going to a lot of metal shows, and the band is always playing the same song, you're like you, you get bored with that their set list. And I think I I don't understand as a band why you will want to play always the same song i know maybe it's easier and it um for a poor a performance point of view you you get really better at playing always the same song but uh it's more uh, it's more challenging to try to and more funny to try new songs and i i think it's a great idea you had to uh involve uh these fans into the set list you will play yeah it you know, of course, there are always songs we have to. You know, you will never hear a, an Orton Ogden show without things we believe in uh, or gunman. You know, those are standards. Yeah. We have to do that. If we don't, people will, will get really mad at us. Um, yes, obviously. But, uh, and of course, you always have a new record out that uh, you want to promote, uh, new songs you want to play. But we decided now to, for example, I, I don't want to spoil too much. The actual shows we're, we're opening with Death Among the Blind, a song we haven't also played for a while, and we never played it. Played it as an open, you know? Works cool. And we will really want to do that more often, you know? Keep the set list more, uh, 
keep more variety in the set. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm wearing a Blind Guardian shirt and uh, I think this band is a great example. They are German also and uh, they are a great example at switching the set lists constantly. They are playing always, yeah, uh, Valhalla and uh, maybe uh, they will play the script for my Requiem, Nightfall, uh, Majesty quite often. But at the same time, they are really... Uh, spinning that set list i saw them like five times in my life six times actually mm -hmm. and every single time the set list was completely different so that's so cool with my guardian you know I, i've uh, also seen them many many times though i'm much more a fan of the, the old school stuff actually um like but a, yeah, lot, was... a lot of people <laughs> yeah but i like all Still... the stuff Mm. The the stuff I I actually grew up with, you know, just some yeah, me too. some of the yeah some of the stuff like like of course some were far beyond tales. Tales has been one of my very first uh, records my older brother gave me, just when it came out. Yeah, there's some magics in those records, and uh, the, I think the. The blend of trash metal and power metal and uh, epicness is such uh, is so unique on those albums, especially uh, somewhere far beyond imagination from the other side. And then on Nightfall, they went completely nuts with uh, the team of the Silmarion that you say Morgoth right here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan after all the Tolkien saga and um, I think he, they did an incredible job but anyway that's a band that has evolved constantly and you listen to five seconds of any songs of Blind Guardian you know it's them <laughs> that, that's that's the way it should be and now we have yeah. the full uh, circle to to uh, our own songwriting process, you know, we wanted to evolve, but with the DNA of uh, of our the DNA intact, yeah. And I think you managed to do it because uh, when when you, you started heard the album, yeah, I've listened to it like five times, man. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, Curtis sent sent it to me, and uh, uh, I've listened the uh, the thing uh, from cover to back uh, at least five times and I was listening to it uh, when you were uh, <laughs> talking to me at first I went, oh shit <laughs> he's there <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked the album uh, to be serious and if I don't like something I will say to it up front I don't give a fuck and uh, I think the opener is such a great track, great fast power metal track, epic, such a great way to start an album, no time to lose, boom. <laughs> and it's not a single, it's not a single, people will have a surprise, I think, starting that album. We, we, we were actually talking about it when, when Sade sent the, the final uh, track list of what he suggested as the final set list. And and I was like, yeah, um, I really like it. But what do you think people will say? He, he was like, yeah, like a fist in the face. Absolutely, yeah. let's do it that way. You know. Yeah, and in the spirit of uh, like bringing back the more old school sound of uh, the band, I think there yeah. was a lot of fast song back then. So. It's a great, great way to kick this album off. And uh, after that, you have The Order of Fear and the singles, Moonfire, with great big anthems, uh, grandiose. Uh, so it, it keeps up. It's not as fast, but at the same time, it's, it's literally ordinal again. And you can be disappointed uh, with those songs. And... I will say other favorite of mine. I will just bring the set list back in my face. Uh, before I get to the longer songs at the end. But uh, 
Prince of Sorrow is one of my favorite. It's not a single neither, but I really liked it. Um, okay. And uh, obviously, I, I like Conquest. Conquest is just a sing-along song, uh, really catchy. It, it's perfect for a single. And uh, there's a nice story behind that track that Sebastian uh, didn't even want to uh, full, fully produce that song. And then uh, I think yeah. some <laughs> member of the band were like, no, no, we have to do it. Uh, it, was were... <laughs> it was me. It was you, okay. <laughs> uh, he, he, he was like, uh, okay, uh, this is the finished master. And I, and I was scrolling through the tracks. I said, hey, Conquest is missing. Ah, no, I, I don't think I'm finishing Conquest. I just left the chat, picked up the phone, and said, you fucking idiot! You want to leave <laughs> all the best track? Are you nuts? <laughs> and now, he, and he was like, yeah, really? Oh, wait, wait, Niels is on the other line. Oh, he said the same, you know? And, and now he says, okay, this is one of the best songs I actually have ever written, you know? Yeah. It's super simple, super catchy, and it, it just works great. And, um, so he's now super happy <laughs> we convinced him. And I think the, the song is a, that song is a little bit different from everything else on the album. I think there's almost a folk influence. It's not folky, but kind of, it's kind of close of that. And what I think is the trong, strongest uh, part of that song is you got a big pre-chorus that can be a chorus in almost any song and then there's the real chorus and you're like okay wow that it's is, so catchy this is some classic for our songwriting you know what we're gonna rehearse the, the song uh tonight and um i'm super excited because we're playing it for the very first time on friday at hellfest you know oh, yeah having in france one yeah. of the biggest uh, metal Festival. festivals in the world, <laughs> and you're just kicking it off with a brand new song. You're playing there for the very first time. I I don't see that as a problem because uh, if someone has heard the song once, he already knows the 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 melodies, and if you never heard it, when once you get to the second chorus. Uh, the second time you hear the pre-chorus chorus, you will be engaged as well already. So uh, you don't need to listen to the song live five times to get into it. So, uh, okay. So, and what I was surprised when I received the album is the, the last three songs you have, yes, an interlude, but you have a seven minute songs and a eight minute songs to close that thing off. And I was super excited since uh, I, I love progressive music. I love longer songs and I mm -hmm. didn't know what will be the direction for those songs. But I have to say it, it has a, a crescendo like in the last one, the long darkness. It starts uh, more mid tempo, and then there's a riff at the middle that changed completely the the direction of the song. And I was like, "Oh yes, okay, let's have some surprises." How do you like those songs, yeah. the longer one? Uh, I I also was super surprised when I when I heard the final demo, you know, uh, and I was like. Okay, this is something we haven't done for a while, you know? uh, and um, also we were questioning, want to want to do something like this, and yeah, why not? You know, bring back the epicness. So we we have um, almost like two parts of the record. We have the epic finishing, and you have also the the catchy, uh, metalish stuff at the beginning. You know, so there should be something for everyone, but it still, you know, it still works together as a whole, right? Oh, totally. It doesn't feel like it's another band or another record from uh, the same you know? band. It, it fits. It's just longer development. Yeah. But and it's still I, very I, uh, catchy. 
when, when Sabe brought back the idea to include these two older songs, you know, uh, one was uh, uh, from an old demo he now reworked, and the other one was a leftover from Gunman. He was like, you think we really can do that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, great songs. Let's Let's do it. It's time that people hear it. Yeah, for sure, because Gunman is such a great record. Uh, even the leftovers are great songs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and sometimes a, a song needs time to uh, get its full strength. Yeah, because, Yeah, you revisit it like a couple of... Do you know the band Theocracy? The American band Theocracy? Um, I know the name of the band. But anyway... Uh, a song that Matt is the singer and uh, the songwriter of the band uh, since the beginning. It was his brainchild. And uh, he had a song, like a 20-minute song he wrote when he was at the beginning of his uh, career, uh, even before the first album. And then 20 years later, he decided to uh, uh, tickle that, that song. And finally, it's on the, the last album. And I was like... What a fucking great song, and he has such a big story behind that song. It makes it even more magical. So I think sometimes the it needs uh, a little bit of time to grow on you, and you, you don't know, but your brain is still working on that. <laughs> and then yeah. you and then you have yeah, some yeah. Back back then for gunman, the time wasn't right. Now it was so. Now it is. And which song, which song was it? Which one uh, of the last two? Is it Anthem to the Dark Side or uh, The Long Darkness? Uh, that I, was from Gunman. You're not sure? Uh, Anthem of the Dark Side was, was uh, the, the one from the demo and The Long Darkness was uh, initially thought for Gunman. I hope I don't mix that up. If I mix it up, save to, please don't be mad at me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will not give you shit for that. <laughs> I have a question regarding the the sound of the album. I think it sounds just great, crystal clear. Uh, and I think during the guitar solos, uh, the tone of the guitar are like um, it feels sometimes like there's a, a keyboard harmonizing with the guitar. And it feels like almost a video game sound, a little bit. Uh, what do you have to say about that? I think uh, it sounds great. It's not a complaint. <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe in a Prince of Sorrow. I don't know. You know, we have... Um, Prince we of Sorrow think... and The Order of Fear, the title track, as some of this uh, part we... that feels like that. Always had keyboard sounds, synth players, uh, and, and uh, orchestration in our songs. So yeah, it could be, <laughs> but it, it's not more or less than we had on the old records. What we actually did is we returned to standard tuning uh, on most of the songs, and uh, okay. they're not like uh, this drop down low A, low C, low B stuff we used on, on final days okay this is something we we have done so it's more like, it's much more of a classic metal guitar sound than we had in the past that's nice <laughs> and you are going to play Elfes. uh tell me um uh, in the band there's a lot of uh, back vocals, obviously. Even uh, it's really uh, rare that you hear Sebastian's voice just uh, just one of them. It's always there's layers of vocals. Uh, how live you will pull that off? Are you uh, singing with him? There is there any backtracks to help him to sound a little bit larger? Uh, What's your take so, on that? We, uh, we have like two up to three backing vocals where we uh, try to enhance 
uh, Zabe's vocal lines as good as we can, but we are no no singers, and we of course cannot uh, uh, imitate a forty voice. voice choir. <laughs> yeah, know? it's impossible. So, <laughs> yeah, we 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 are using backing tracks for keyboards and orchestrations anyway. So uh, there are also some choir parts on okay. the back tracks, but only to push it, you know? You hear us sing live, of course, you hear all the wrong in the green notes. <laughs> 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 but, you know, uh, we're using backing tracks for keyboards and the, the huge choirs. Yeah, I asked it because I never, like I never had the chance to see your band live. And uh, I know, especially in power metal, it's always uh, a big question. Are we bringing uh, like backing track to make it feel uh, more like the version on the album, uh, larger? Or are we going to try to help the singer the best we can to make it uh, the best sounding possible? And we were talking about Blank Guardian. They are not using... Uh, backing track on vocals they are singing everything you hear and uh but the vibe is so different than on the album sometimes it's it feels a little bit less epic but uh it's more organic at the same time mm. so um, i think our own life is much more raw than on the record but um we still wanted to create it's the same atmosphere the people know it and love from the record but we try not to overdo it you know yeah so totally with, with some bands you, you have like uh the, the feeling you're just listening to the to the same record you have at home this is something we don't want to have but um we try to give the people at least the same feeling they know and, and they lost from the record everything else would be for a band like us it would not feel right actually you know you still see a, a band playing live you know uh and as i said we're the, the band is much more raw much more metal than on the record and much heavier you know i, I just heard a comment uh, or read a comment that uh heaviest power metal band on the planet <laughs> and uh, <laughs> under a live video and i was like yeah this guy is pretty much right and some some other guy the the manager of power Wolf, uh he, he just said when he when he saw us the last time damn you're playing power metal but you move like a fucking death metal band on stage oh yeah <laughs> like crushing everything <laughs> and uh i like that <laughs> This is actually the, the, the thing I, I want to give to the people, you know? They have to get a, a raw and a good power metal band, but, you know... It's punchier in life. Have, have to be, of course, like they are, right? That's We're cool. not punk rock. <laughs> I love punk rock also. <laughs> yeah, me <laughs> I'm the punk rock event. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was at the punk rock festival two weeks ago, and it was so awesome. Like uh, with Mylon Cullen, Lagwagon, all those uh, old, uh, and they played uh, like Lagwagon played the album trashed entirely, and Mylon Cullen okay. played same old tunes entirely. And there's one song from that record that they never uh, they never played live actually. So it was like a first. For them to play Mystic Reptile, and I was like, "What the fuck? They <laughs> never played that song." <laughs> so, uh, okay, maybe uh, last two question quickly. Uh, more for you. Uh, when do you have to leave? Do you have another interview, like in five minutes or something? Yeah, something like that. Okay. We'll uh, wrap this uh, quickly. Uh, you are going to uh, do some festival this uh, summer. What will be your yeah. dream lineup? Uh, you're going on a tour with uh, four other bands, and you can pick any any of the those bands. Even Metallica can be there. Okay. What will be your top lineup to go on tour? You know, 
in this festival season, a lot of dreams are coming true. You know, on yeah. Friday we are we are playing on the same stage as Machine Head. You know, who's, oh nice, which is one of uh, Pat's and my absolute favorites. And next week, you know, we are opening a, a, at a festival show for fucking Judas Priest. You know, oh my so god, if you ask me for dream lineup, you know, it would be Judas Priest headlining, and then Machine Head, and then yes. us. I present yeah. you Rob Alford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Judas Priest. And the last uh, album is Kick So Much Nuts. <laughs> yes, yes. Such a good record. Oh, and, my you God. Know, we're, we're, Pure... we're all so sponsored. We're playing, we're playing with Priest. We're playing with Priest. You no, know, you're playing on the same festival on the same day on the same stage. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> we're playing with Priest. <laughs> Maybe we're you'll have the chance to, uh, maybe you'll have the chance to talk to uh, to Rob or to uh, Richie and yeah, all the guys. I, I, really I hope so. Would, would would love to meet Rob and, and boys. Would be cool. Oh, he seems a really genuine, uh, adorable dude. Yeah, I only only heard absolutely good and great things. So this would be. Something like a dream come true. <laughs> yes. Hey, I have a little uh, game to play with you. I'm showing you a cover of an album, and you say to me, is it a banger or a stinker? Because they are like controversial albums. So Running Wild, Masquerade. Do you know that album well? Of course. <laughs> Great record. Great though, though I like I think it's one of their best but it's really underrated a lot of people are complaining about that album and I never get why no, no, no. I, I like Black and In more and uh, it, yeah. Black and In was also the, the first time I've seen Running Wild Life and I also saw them on the Masquerade tour but um, oh, I like wow. Black and In still more nice I like that band so much, especially uh, the eighties and nineties stuff. Uh, what's next? Uh, Sonata Artica Unia. <laughs> That's very controversial. <laughs> so I really like the first two Sonata Artica records, and uh, I've been with them on tour with my former band, um, and they're super nice guys. So I would never say anything bad about them. But uh, that record is. Um, not my cup of tea. Okay, that's a stinker. I think I think the first four album are incredible. First two even more, but uh, that album was maybe a letdown. But they tried something different, and I fully respect that. Uh, it's more progressive, but less melodic. I think less catchy. Uh, and uh, last one, we're talking about Blind Guardian, another controversial one, A Night at the Opera. To be honest, I, I was I was out after Nightfall. I didn't like Nightfall except for two or three songs because it was too much of a of a yeah too many layers. Like, yeah, not not not, not that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I the, the the spoken word stuff in between was super distracting for me i love mirror mirror i still think it's one of the best songs they ever did but um and some others but i after the after uh, nightfall i really had my thing with blank guardian and so i did not even come to that record i never listened to it so oh my whatever God, i would man. say would be wrong it's the most <laughs> epic record ever recorded i think for me, it's a it's a masterpiece, one of the best record ever made. But I I get that a lot of people are uh, arguing that it's maybe too much, too many layers, too many uh, vocals, too many too. It's but it's overwhelming. But there's so many details in that freaking record. After listening to it like five hundred times, uh, sometimes in my headphones, I'm like, oh shit, I I never heard that part. <laughs> it's like there's so many things in the back of the song and i was asking the last thing uh which band are are coming with you uh for the tour 
Um, for the release shows, we have uh, Brainstorm and Rage with us. Oh, Brainstorm. It's been a long time yeah. I've listened to them. It's good yeah. band. Absolutely. And good friends. So, um, we, when, when we it's, were uh, about to... Uh... It's still in DB Fring uh, singing? Yeah, yeah, of course. Still yeah, the same like, band. Yeah, for the bass great player. voice. They switched the bass player, yeah. And, um, yeah, for next year, um, I'm not allowed to tell yet, <laughs> but it's going to be, it's going to be a great lineup. Okay. Nice. All power metal bands or? Yeah. Okay. All different styles say. of power metal. Ah, that's cool. I like that yeah. this way. The diversity. <laughs> Absolutely. So, really man, cool one. Have a great run this summer and uh, best Thank you. of luck and success with this new album. I think it's a great record and people will dig it. Uh, new people as well as the longtime fans will love this record. It's uh, it's uh, it's great, really great. Thank you. So oh. hope hope to see you somewhere somehow. Yeah, for sure. I like to go to festival. So. Uh, Keep in touch. I will add you uh, on Facebook if you have a, a an account. Yeah, yeah. Fa Facebook and Instagram. So just feel free. Yeah, I'll <laughs> do. It was nice. You're a great guy, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, man. See you. Yeah. Metal. <laughs>